one of the things that I think a lot of people are asking themselves around this live animal export situation is why. Why is National wanting to do it? Why are they bringing it in? What's it all about? So Nicola Gregg uh, was on, um, what's this one called? The Nation, The Nation, News Hub Nation uh, this weekend. And she got a, a good old griggling, grill, grilling. Did, I, did that work at all? Not at all? No, not at all. <laughs> And um, a big part of the conversation that she had uh, with New South Nation was around why and also about the regulations going to be changed. We'll talk more about the regulations shortly. So let's have a listen to the conversation from the weekend. <laughs> Look, nobody's had any um, stringent regulations they've had to stick to. So if we were to form a government, we want to amend this Animal Welfare Amendment Act that has banned the, the trade. Um, and we would implement what's called a gold standard. We've been working really, really closely with the Australian... I like how she says, what's called a gold standard, like it's a new kind of phrase. It's like, now, I'll, I'll walk you through what a gold standard is, but what it means is a standard that's top notch, what we call a gold standard. I'm like, I, I think we we kind of get, I think it's self describing, but I think we kind of get that, don't you think? No, so you've, you've, lost kind of, me, you've lost okay. me there. I, I need Italian. a. a Sorry, you're going to say, I'll cut you off. I'm oh, no, 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 all good. All right, I'll keep going. Um, exporters on this and they've imp yeah. implemented it themselves and, and the bottom line of that gold standard is that only custom built ships can land in New Zealand and depart with our animals on board and um, I went up to Napier just last week and got on board a Dutch built vessel called the Galbra Express and it's one it's a hundred million dollar custom built ship and mm. honestly I, I was so yes. so impressed with it that um, I've got absolutely no concerns now at all about the safety <laughs> and welfare of our animals being transferred by sea. And on it we Certainly. saw, and you know, special but drain. Only, and, but Adam? only 10% of the animals that go to China go on those boats. So why... Now, to me, because I'm dumb, this was a bit unclear. She does explain it a bit later, in a second Rebecca does, but... So only 10% go on these new fandangled boats. That means the other 90% go on boats that are converted from... Uh, container ships. That means National has to figure out how to get the other 90% of animals onto these boats that can only currently take a capacity of 10% and cost $100 million each. So is that clear? Does that make sense? So National is going to change this law back and then not have the ability to actually do the live exports with these new ships because there's not enough of them. But they're going to change the law. Why are we out here defending and promoting that 10% of the industry if 90% of the industry is not getting it right and putting animals in, the, in those horrific conditions? Oh, look, I totally agree with you, and it comes down to cost. There are good exporters and good importers who are prepared to go to the expense of using these particular ships. And at the end of the day, they will be the only ships that are allowed to land here. And you've got to look at the big picture, I think, as well, about China's demand for our protein. And the Chinese government, as I understand it, can only sustainably feed about 60% of its population. So they're looking to grow but These are, these are arguments put up by the industry as to why it's important to keep it going. But I'm interested and how you were going to do that in a humane way as the animal welfare spokesperson. Um, and so you want to... I mean, I know this is a kind of silly question, Joey, but does anyone else find it hilarious that the quote-unquote animal welfare spokesperson is talking about live animal exports? It's not just... Yeah, it's, 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 it's bizarre. Yeah, it's a bizarre one, that's for sure. Set up monitoring this gold standard, um, as you call it. Gold um, standard. What's that? We want to set up mo monitoring for the tens of thousands of animals for their three-week voyage at sea, for their um, time in Chinese quarantine when yep. they arrive in multiple ports right across China, uh, across their transport, sometimes for hundreds of kilometres, uh, to the place where they will eventually land. These farms, which could be spread right across China, you want to do this for 130,000 animals that were done last year. Um, but you're basically setting up a New Zealand regulatory framework in China. The answer is? <laughs> yes, we are. Yes, we are. <laughs> the answer, did you get that, Chewy? Yes, we are. So not what? only not only are they going to change regulations in New Zealand, but they're going to implement regulations in China. The answer was, yes, we are. I'm going to play that again, right, just I'm to sure make sure we get it. It's for the Chinese. Yeah, I bet it is. Thousand animals that were done last year. Um, but you're basically setting up a New Zealand regulatory framework in China. 
Yes, we are. And, and that's um, to do with our trading relationship with China. As I just said, China wants our protein. So I do believe that China will meet the expectations that we are looking to implement. Oh, um, so we I trust don't them. for a minute believe um, that all animals... Are we trust them, Chewy. It's a bit like Luxon and Seymour talking about trusting people not to have to be able to isolate for themselves by, for seven days. We trust them. We just trust them. They're, they're people and they're going to do the right thing. We trust them. That's what she's saying. We trust China she, to do the right thing. She, she might be overstating how much the Chinese would listen to us <laughs> on anything. <laughs> badly in China. And actually, I, I do challenge that perception because New Zealanders have got to start asking themselves why they think that. The farms that I've observed, this gets better. I've certainly You've been to, to the, the farms in China? Were I to be. Good question. Beg your pardon? You've been to the farms in China? I haven't been. I was just about to say, <laughs> were I to be the Minister for Animal Welfare, I will go oh, up to yeah. China. So hang on. She She's saying that there's, what are we giving, why are we saying these farmers are all bad? Rebecca very smartly goes, so you've been there and you know, and she goes, well, no. No, but, you know, but. And have a look at these farms for myself. The other thing that we would implement, apart from regulating for the custom-built ships only, is an importer licensing regime, whereby Chinese importers, Chinese farmers who want our product, have to be certified by MPI that they meet animal welfare standards. So that includes food provision, water provision, the safety of the animals, shelter, and so on and so forth. Mm. Um, they Nicola. will be accredited by yes. our MPI. No, I just want to finish this, sorry, Rebecca. Certainly. They will be accredited by our MPI staff in country, and then we can further overlay that with an international accreditation agency like Quality Assure. And so then New Zealanders will have comfort in the fact that New, that New Zealand stock going up to China are going to be treated to the same conditions as they would on farm here in New Zealand. Well, this is a huge Possible. logistics exercise that we're yeah. talking about now, uh, both here, but mostly in China, which is another sovereign country which doesn't have any, any animal welfare uh, laws as you'll be aware, Nicola. This is beautiful. Um, is it realistic? Is the Chinese government on board? Oh. Because MPI says it doesn't have jurisdiction and cannot require a verification of animal <laughs> welfare after <laughs> the animals arrive. Yes, but it can requirement, require it, sorry, if these farmers and importers were to be seeking certification to import our animals. And equally, there's opportunity. Yeah, but what that's basically saying is if they can tick all the boxes, we can let them do it. That doesn't, ma I mean, look, I'll tell you a little story. Secret time, as Bert Kreischer says. Um, when I got my first mortgage, yeah, I was married at the time. And the mortgage broker sat down in our house. My then wife was pregnant with our first child. And the mortgage broker said to me, planning on having children in the future? And at that time, we already had bought a baby buggy and it was sitting in the laundry. And the response from me was, yeah, at some stage. And I ticked the box and we got the mortgage, even though we didn't fulfill the criteria exactly. Now, it was never a problem after that, but I knew that if they knew there was a baby going to be along in six months, that might have impacted our chances. So in other words, we ticked the boxes, but we didn't necessarily follow through on what the expectations were other than paying the mortgage was obviously the big one. But you know what I'm saying? If you tick a box, doesn't mean you're necessarily then going to follow through on it. So I think that's the point that they're making. And National sounds very naive to basically be saying over and over and over and over and over again, we can trust China. Or more importantly, we can trust the farming sector in China to do the right thing because that's what they're doing. Because after you've got regulation, I mean, I'm sure lots of farms in New Zealand and lots of businesses full stop fulfill regulations or fulfill criteria to do things, yet still don't do them. How many fucking restaurants do you go into that's got a C rating and not an A because they don't clean as well as they're supposed to? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it just sounds like they're creating a system that is absolutely full of loopholes. Yep. And I think there's, a, there's and one last. One last beautiful bit to come from this, talking about going up to America, because someone's mentioned in the chat about the animal standards in America as well. Um, and that will, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Chewie, but we'll just play this. It's only 30, 35 seconds and then we'll be back. Test for MPI to, to work in with our offshore counterparts, particularly on the likes of Chinese quarantine facilities, as you've suggested. And again, I just want to push back on this perception that Chinese farmers are cruel to their animals or the Chinese no, system is cruel to its animals. That's because not I think the that there's perception. a massive, massive assumption. Well, that's not a perception. It's just a fact that there are no animal welfare uh, laws in China, something that you will be aware but of. But nor are there in America. That's the interesting thing. There are, There is not an but, animal welfare act in America. Do you know, you know they're saying hoisted by one's own petard? <laughs> you, you are going to see a real-world oh. example of that. You ready for this? You ready yeah, for this? Bring it. 
Here we go. No animal welfare uh, laws in China. It's something that you will be aware but nor of. Nor are there in America. That's the interesting thing. There, are, there is not an animal welfare act in America, and yet New Zealanders don't seem to mind our animals going up there. So, really, got to question. <laughs> do, we, do we export live animals to America? We don't, do we? Not as far as I'm aware, no, but that's so, the point. So that's that the is point. the point. People don't challenge How, it. But, but that's because we're not exporting them there, Nicola. There you go. So that would be that the, was, that would be the yeah, dictionary definition of hoisted by one's own petard. Now, the whole thing started off with her talking about regulations and basically saying we're going to re-regulate the sector, which of course raises the question, uh, based on what Mr Luxon said within the last two weeks, on the red tape front, it proposes requiring both local and central government to scrap two existing regulations if they intend to introduce a new one and setting up a review body to advise on regulations. So... There you go, John. Sounds like about 20 regulations have been added. So that means uh, 40, according to their law, have to go. 40 regulations somewhere are going to disappear to start up live exports again, Chewy. I I just love that they've trotted someone out that is just, like, unprepared. Yeah. Like, she, she's read her breath. She knows the talking points that she, she's got to hit. And then has just, just walked into that thing about America. That was really dumb. And like the live, like you're talking about, oh, like 10% of the ships are custom built and they're all luxurious for the animals and they'll, they'll love it. It'll be like a cruise for them yeah. uh, all the way to China. And then 90% of them are, are floating rust buckets, floating concentration camps. The, the whole thing doesn't make any sense, right? We're, we're sending live animals to China. It's the same thing that we do with other products here. We we just we just give people the raw materials and then they create something of more value. Why can't we do that? And look, this is the other thing, right? Let's just repaint this idea about the ninety percent. Let's just let's just uh, I put a little example down here. The city that you live in has a hundred buses. Yeah, mm. ninety of them are dilapidated, broken, holes in the floor. People who go in there are breathing carbon monoxide, etc., etc., etc. Ten out of those hundred are mint. They're electric. They're state of the art. They bloom and they they kiss you on the ass as you're going through the door. There's an electric thing that blows air in your face. They're the most amazing things in the world. What mm. they're proposing is to come in as a government and ban the ninety buses that are full of holes and are causing you to, uh, to do carbon monoxide poisoning and only keep the 10 that are working. But those 10 have to first either fit all those other customers that go in the 100 buses in them or the, the new then potential uh, national government is going to require 90 of these other buses that cost $100 million each to be built for these exports to happen or for the bus rides to happen. I, I can tell you what I think the likely scenario. The likely scenario is it'll be like a yes, yes, yes. Within the next 12 years, we expect all of these boats to be replaced and we'll just continue on as we are right now. I mean, I can't see any other way because another part of this interview, I think she said there was either 25 or 45 of these boats in the world right now. That's it, the whole world. And so therefore, uh, if there's five or 10 of them operating out of New Zealand, that means there's 90 or 100 of the other boats going. So how long is it going to go from not just 45 of these boats around the world, but enough to give New Zealand access to 100 of them? You know what I'm saying? It's just utterly ridiculous. Does does do you, does you anyone think that this is an actual legitimate, serious policy from them? Like, Well, I, I just like, read somewhere I, I get in the I get the sense from this that there is no intention to follow through with it. it, it it's, it, it's I, I got this a couple a couple of times with them as, as they're coming up with stuff that is just not going to fly. And it's almost like, well, we're all comfortable in opposition here. We're not ready to, to be a government. We'll just half-ass it. That's interesting. Um, it, it's like, I mean, it's a tiny percentage of our exports. Yeah, It's got massive negative connotations for a lot of people. Like, it, it's a barbaric process. There's not, there's not like, there's not a public outcry of people going, "Oh no, we've got to keep our exports up." They're, they're like, everyone's happy to let this go. Yeah. So, who's this policy for? Yeah, exactly. Why, 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 why? There's one other clip I'm going to play, and we're going to keep tracking because we're actually coming up half past already, and we've got a lot to get through today. Um, is this just? And look, you know me, Chewy. I had a big conversation last night. I do feel uncomfortable when I refer to someone's intellect. And kind of question it because I think it's sort of a lowest common denominator. Go, oh, you're a bit thick, but you have to ask the question. Let's let's be let's be generous and say, when someone is so ill-informed 
that they seem to, and I'm saying seem to because it's not a legislation, but they seem to not even understand announcements made recently in the sector about not allowing Bobby Calf killing anymore. So Fon I'll show you that first. So Fonterra announced that they're ordering an end to killing Bobby Calves on dairy farms. Yeah, Fonterra has ordered its farms to stop killing Bobby, Bobby Calves on their farms unless there is a humane reason to do so. Now, obviously, there's a bit of uh, wiggle room there. Uh, they might say a humane reason is because there's too many of them, which means nothing will change. But it's not a legislation. Fonterra has ordered it. And it seems that Nicola Gregg hasn't had that memo because she talks about all the Bobby Calves that are going to be killed if we don't do this. So have a listen. The other part is um, we have an enormous problem now here in New Zealand with an excess of 130,000 bobby calves a year which are excess to the internal supply system. Now these are, tend to be the second tier grade of, of genetics and livestock that um, at the moment quite frankly are going to be culled. Why would you not take this opportunity to give these animals a long and productive life by putting them on a boat, a custom built boat where they're treated really really well <laughs> on the... Oh, this is the other thing. You know the Shakespearean saying, me think she does, the, what is it, me think the lady doth protesteth too much? Yes. Just have a listen to how many times she talks about them being looked after really, really well. And just, just does that make you think that maybe there's, it's, there's a hypnotizing act going on here? They're going to be very, very well looked after. <laughs> They will be very, very well looked after. Life by putting them on a boat. And remember, they're going to have a long and happy life being on a boat going to China and being killed for meat. That's their long and happy life. They're going to have a long and happy life being cut up in China after being on a boat for several weeks. Don't look too deeply. The long and productive life by putting them on a boat, a custom built boat, where they're treated really, really well on the water up to the destination farm, where again they're treated really well <laughs> on a destination farm so they can live a full and productive life and, when... and feed a nation that is looking to build its, its rapidly growing population with good, safe, healthy New Zealand protein. Now, this sounds um, exactly what the industry That's is saying, uh, Nicola, but I just have. So there you go. But I just, the other thing about this, this long and productive life to be eaten. I mean, I don't know too much about the industry. I, I know friends in Huntley who have a, a beef farm and you don't, they, they don't live their full life and then get put on the plate. They, they live for a couple of years, they get fed up and then they get, they get killed and eaten. So I don't know what this whole thing about long and productive life and who they've been looked after very, very well. It just, someone said, I can see someone said Jedi mind trap. It's like, these are not, these are not the bobby calves you're looking for. It seems a bit like that, doesn't it? Yeah, Sorry. absolutely. Uh, like, and, and other things that should, don't forget that we are propping up China's population. Like they can't, they can only feed sixty percent of their population, and without our New Zealand concentration ships for animals, sorry, cruise lines for animals, um, forty percent of the Chinese population is going to die. That you know, it's it's just it's our crazy. Fault. Yeah, it's, it's all our fault. Like I, Bec I still don't see who she's appealing to. I don't like the absolute like. If if we're talking about our farming industry, like you see farmers quite often go, "Oh, people don't understand where the food comes from." It's because we've got politicians like that that speak about that. Like the bobby calf thing is is gross. Like anything to do with the the dairy industry, that is one thing that really sticks out in my mind. If you've ever uh, been stuck in traffic in the rural area with a farmer taking a, a a trailer full of dead bobby calves stacked up like firewood down to the works. Uh, you're staring at that for half an hour. It really uh, makes you think about your dairy intake, I tell you that yeah. much. Yeah, and look, the other thing is, um, she was talking about China wanting our protein, China wanting our protein, 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 protein. I haven't yet heard a reason as to why there needs to be live exports. Because frozen yep. would be fine. China can still get our protein. So that was the point I was just thinking that jumped out of my head yep. there. So there can be, there can be, you know, humanely killed in New Zealand. They can be frozen and sent to China. They still get our protein. So that's off the table. That argument's off the table. So what is it? What's left? Why well, they have to be like, live? Like New Zealand's farmer export farming has been always built on sending frozen products overseas. We invented it to, to send meat back to the old country. Mm. Um, those freezing works here in New Zealand, they provide jobs for New Zealanders. We can then look after, you know, be responsible for animal welfare from the from the farm to the works, and then we ship everything overseas. We're adding to the quality. We get to gold standard everything. The moment we hand off to another country and go, well, there you go. Like I, I don't see the benefit. Where, where is the added value in that? Mm.